Hey everyone, I'm Mariana. This is Impression Blend and it is time for another monthly wrap up. So today I am going to be telling you about everything I watched in May. I actually have quite a few things to talk to you about today, so we're just going to get right into it. I did not watch a lot of TV in May, so the only TV series I finished was a Russian series on Netflix. It's called To The Lake, and I'm just going to tell you right away, I was not a big fan of it, and I considered not talking about it at all today because I would not recommend it. This is basically a survival story it is about an epidemic that breaks out in Russia and it just devolves into chaos. We're following a small group of people. They are trying to do their best to survive and get to a lake that is pretty far from Moscow. This lake kind of symbolizes a safe place and a place of hope. And it does not help that this is based on a book that is actually a really good book that I enjoyed because they did not do a good job with this adaptation. The problem with the series is that it just is your basic survival story where anything that can go wrong will go wrong and the writing doesn't really shine in any way, shape or form. The characters are very cliche. The dialogue is sometimes very cringeworthy and certain portrayals are just ridiculous. So I ended up giving the series a five out of 10. And even that kind of feels a little bit generous. The reason I gave it a five is because it's actually shot in a very effective way. The visuals of it are the best part. So I don't even know if I would check out season two of this, which apparently there is going to be a season two. Not sure if I'm going to watch it, but yeah, I would not recommend it. I have seen some reviews from people who actually enjoyed it. And now that I'm looking at it, it looks like it's at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm kind of surprised about that one, but there are only five ratings from the critics here and for audience it's 82 percent with 133 ratings so maybe i'm a minority opinion here i don't know i was not a big fan of this if you do like those type of stories where an infectious disease breaks out and it's deadly and people have to survive if contagion style stories that are more thriller horror based are interesting to you then maybe you would enjoy this and maybe you do want to check this out but personally for my my taste I thought this was very cliche very poorly written and on top of that I read the book it's a hundred times better and this is very poorly adapted in a very basic basic way. Aside from this, the only other TV series I'm watching right now is The Boys Season 2. I did not finish it yet, so I'm not going to talk about it, but next month we're going to talk about The Boys Season 2 because, yes, I am in the middle of that. Now let's move on to the movies and take a look at my Letterboxd. I am Impression Blend on Letterboxd, just as I am on Twitter, Instagram, generally on social media. So for the month of May, I apparently decided to take half a week very seriously. This was not intentional in any way, but most of what I ended up watching was horror movies. I don't know why this happened. This was not planned. And to be honest, I'm a little bit tired of the genre at the moment. So you're probably not going to be seeing a lot of horror in my June wrap up. Although I am definitely going to watch that new Conjuring movie. I mean, I'm a fan of the Conjuring, so... Of course, I'm going to watch it. But other than that, I don't know if I'm going to be watching a lot of horror in June. So May started off with Alexander Aja movies. As you may remember, I reviewed Oxygen. And before I reviewed Oxygen, I wanted to catch up on a couple more of the director's films. So the first movie I watched was Crawl. Now, I don't know why I decided this, but for some reason, I thought I was absolutely going to hate this movie. Even though the reviews for it were pretty decent, something about the trailer just made me think that this was going to be ridiculous and stupid and it was not going to be my cup of tea, which is why I didn't watch it until now. And guess what? This is actually a very competently made thriller that was entertaining. I enjoyed it. If you haven't seen Crawl, it's 
set in Florida where a massive hurricane hits a town and while everybody's evacuating, this girl who is a competitive swimmer goes to try to rescue her father and then they get attacked by alligators. Don't get me wrong, this movie is not a masterpiece. The dialogue and the characters are very average, serviceable horror movie things, but it was effective and it was entertaining and it was competently made and I do not regret spending time on this movie. So if this sounds like a thriller that you would enjoy and for some reason you haven't watched it, it is better than you think it is. So I ended up giving Crawl a 6 out of 10. It's definitely one of those had fun, watched it once, moved on with my life type of movies, not planning to watch it again. Now, Oxygen is a movie that I reviewed on my channel, so I'm not going to talk much about it. It's a sci-fi claustrophobic thriller. That's all I'm going to say. It's about this woman who is stuck inside a cryopod and she doesn't know why she's there, who she is, and she's running out of oxygen. I thought this was a really fun, really tense thriller and I would absolutely recommend it. Ended up giving it an 8 out of 10. Check out my review for more details. Now after that I watched Buried. I have not seen Buried until now but as soon as I watched Oxygen it just made me think of the premise for Buried so I had to check it out and see how the two compare. And Buried I thought was not as good as Oxygen but it's still a very tense and well-executed thriller. It is about a man who wakes up in a coffin. The lead actor is Ryan Reynolds and this is the only person you see in this movie. He is not sure where he is. He is trying to figure this out. He's trying to get himself rescued. He has a cell phone with him so he's trying to contact people, trying to get people to find him because he remembers what happened and he remembers where he is generally but he does not know exactly. He is not sure how far underground he is what's going on and it is a good thriller. If you like those bottle type movies that are very claustrophobic, a very simple premise and just focused on a character trying to get through a problem, then you're probably going to enjoy this one. I ended up giving it a 7 out of 10. I thought certain things about it were a little bit heavy handed. There are some themes in this movie about the overlords of corporations and people in charge just not caring about you as a human being, which it's not that I don't agree with the message. They were just so heavy handed and in your face and obvious and the dialogue that happened around that was occasionally very ridiculous and over the top. So I, I don't like heavy handed themes in movies. Sometimes that works. Most of the time it doesn't. This is where it did not work for me. But I still think it's a very solid thriller. And if this sounds like a fun movie to you, you should check it out. You're not going to be disappointed. Ended up giving it a 7 out of 10. Then I decided to watch another Alexander Aja film. And this was the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. I am not a big fan of The Hills Have Eyes, the original, the Wes Craven original, and that's putting it mildly. I actually hate that movie. I wanted to see if this was any better, if this was one of those remakes that are better than the original movie. And I do think this improved on the original, but I still did not like it. I just don't like the idea of it. First of all, cannibalism is just so not my subgenre when it comes to horror. There are very, very few exceptions to this, but generally I just don't enjoy cannibalism movies. And that is what this is. Also, it is still over the top and ridiculous to me. At least the way it comes off is just, it feels so over the top ridiculous horror just like the original it's a little bit better than that but still in that territory so that's why I didn't enjoy it as much I do think it's better but you know not by much because I ended up giving it a 5 out of 10 then I watched The Woman in the Window which I was very excited for I thought this was going to be a solid thriller obviously we have a really good cast here we have Amy Adams we have Gary Oldman 
Julianne Moore, Jennifer Jason Lee. I thought this was going to be a lot better than it turned out. Also, the trailer looked pretty promising, and this is directed by Joe Wright, which he is very hit or miss for me, but I was hoping this was going to be a hit. It looked like it could be a really good thriller, and unfortunately, it just felt very average. This is actually how I felt about the book that this is based on as well. It was very average. The twists were not that impressive, and it kept drawing comparisons with Alfred Hitchcock in general and Rear Window in particular, which did not do this book any favors and same goes for the movie the Hitchcock comparisons are so unnecessary here because then you're comparing it to these amazing classics that are masterpieces and just just stop doing that because it it makes you look worse than you probably do and I just kept thinking about how much better Rear Window is. I can't really say that it's awful, it is competent, but it's very derivative and predictable and you can just tell where this is going very early on. It's just, I would not recommend this unless you really love Amy Adams, but even then, no. I don't think so. I don't think you need this in your life. And I'm giving this a 5 out of 10 because average. After that, I decided to rewatch Scream. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. Definitely one of my favorite horror films of all time. It's a Wes Craven classic. It's funny. It's scary. It's iconic. It's meta. I love this movie so much. I don't think I need to sell you on it. I think it absolutely holds up. It makes fun of the genre, but it is also an effective horror film and an effective mystery. I just, I think it's an awesome horror film and if you haven't seen it I would obviously highly highly recommend it. There are iconic moments and iconic quotes and references not that references make a movie good but the way it dissects the genre of a slasher film is just brilliant. It is amazing. Can you tell I love this film? I love this film. Obviously ended up giving it a 10 out of 10 yet again and will definitely be watching it again probably before the year ends. I watched this movie quite a lot. Then I rewatched Jennifer's Body. This might seem a little bit random, but Jennifer's body has been getting a bit of a resurgence lately. I've seen so many people over the past year talk about how they actually really enjoy the film and how it's misunderstood and how it has been marketed poorly and just did not find its audience right away. And I saw it back when it came out, maybe a little bit later, maybe in 2010, 2011 is when I saw it. And I definitely did not know what to do with this movie when I watched it. I thought it was pretty good, but I didn't love it. However, my friend Emma from Spooky Astronauts did a video breakdown of this film recently. And it just really made me want to watch it again because it seemed a lot more interesting than I remember it to be. So I rewatched it and she was absolutely right. Check out her video. I will link it. She will tell you why this movie is so much better than you remember. But if you don't know what this is about, it's a very dark comedy about two friends, one of whom gets sacrificed by a band. And this ritual kind of goes wrong because she is not a virgin, which is what they think she is. And she ends up coming back from the dead and having to consume other people in order to keep up her good looks and to stay alive. It is a fun movie and it is gross when it needs to be. It is funny when it needs to be. It is entertaining and it actually has more to say than you initially would think, especially based on the marketing because this was marketed very poorly. I ended up giving this an 8 out of 10 and I would absolutely watch it again. It's definitely growing on me and I think it's a much better movie than people give it credit for. Then I watched Army of the Dead. I ended up giving this one a 7 out of 10. As you can tell, I did a whole review on it. If you missed it, check it out. I will have a link for it as well in the info box below. I will have everything that I've reviewed here that I'm talking about linked in the info box below along with my social media. So you are welcome to check those things out. But yeah, this is a new Zack Snyder zombie heist movie. And 
it's fun as long as you know what you're signing yourself up for. It's not a masterpiece. It's not genius in any way. It's not going to get any Oscars. But if you want a fun zombie heist popcorn flick, this will definitely do the job. After that, I watched The Clo Hitch Killer, and this is essentially a coming of age drama but with a serial killer in town because coming of age is not complicated enough apparently for teenagers. This was definitely a lot slower than I expected it to be. It's a character study. It keeps you guessing who the killer is. The lead character actually suspects somebody he knows closely and you're kind of left guessing whether or not it's this person. I felt like it was fairly obvious what the answer to that would be, but it is meant to kind of manipulate the audience, and I think it's pretty successful in that. I do think the slower pacing works here within the context of the story and within the context of this being a coming-of-age drama and a character study, and it is tense and creepy. It has some really good creepy moments in it, so I did enjoy it quite a bit. Ended up giving it a 7 out of 10. I will say though the main character is endlessly frustrating I wanted to shake him and his friend was keeping this going for me because she is great he is he's something else by the way I apologize if the lighting keeps changing the light from the outside the sunshine keeps doing strange things with the colors of my room right now so I'm sorry if that's a thing this is why I film on gloomy days or at night so after The Clo Hitch Killer, I decided to take a step away from horror for a little bit and went for science fiction. I decided to watch Time Trap on Netflix. I have not heard people talk about this at all. I just really liked the poster for it, so I wanted to check it out based on that. It looked like a fun idea. I know I'm not supposed to judge the book by its cover or the movie by its poster, but you know what? It looked like an interesting idea with a premise as well, because this movie is about a group of teenagers who go into this cave and find that time runs slightly differently there. And you guys know I love sci-fi that deals with time travel and the passage of time and the concept of time. It's absolutely my thing, so of course I checked it out. Here's the thing about this movie. I loved the concept of this. I thought this was so interesting and I loved where they went with it eventually. The problem is that the beginning of this film is very rough. You get these cringeworthy characters with their cringeworthy dialogue and their strange decisions that like why would you why would you do that? And there are some gaps in logic in this movie throughout just because things related to time are difficult to do without having any problems or any plot holes at all. It's just a difficult topic to approach. But it is so much easier for me to forgive the flaws of this film because the concept is just so interesting and what they did with it and where they went with it. I loved it. I wish I could tell you more about the story because all of the interesting stuff happens in the second half of the film, but that would be spoilers and you're meant to figure things out along with the characters, so I wouldn't want to take that away from you. But I think if you're willing to sit through a rough beginning, it is going to be rewarding if you enjoy the type of sci-fi that I enjoy. The movie is probably closer to a 6 out of 10, to be honest. You can tell it's pretty low budget. It doesn't look awful or anything, but you can tell that having a bigger budget would have helped this movie quite a bit. But because they do something interesting with the concept and because I was just in love with the idea of it, I ended up giving it a 7 out of 10. And I would actually watch it again to see what I missed because there were definitely clues in the beginning for what happens later. So yeah, I would cautiously recommend Time Trap to you. If you're feeling bored and you're feeling adventurous, it's on Netflix so you can watch it there. Then, as you can see, I went all the way back back to 1920s and here's what happened here. I got tired of the movies that I was watching. Even though I saw movies that I enjoyed, 
I just, I got tired of the overall vibe of thrillers in general, and I decided to A, watch some classics, and B, to start the MIT film course that you can find on YouTube for free. And I decided to go hardcore with it and watch all the movies that are mentioned in that course. So I actually watched more silent films than I logged here because there were short films and I don't log short films for a particular date on Letterboxd so I don't spam my timeline with five shorts that I watched. And these two, The General and Sherlock Jr. were more feature length. So I logged those two and I gotta say, I have never seen a Buster Keaton film before in my entire life and I fell in love. He is amazing. How has nobody told me? I swear, nobody has told me that Buster Keaton is a genius. I've heard the name before. I was aware of his silent film fame, but I just, I never knew that he was so amazing and so funny. I, I love it. I think he's adorable. I think the films he's in are just so wholesome and cute. I don't know what else to say. I don't watch a lot of silent film because I'm not a huge fan of silent film, believe it or not, but this just stole my heart. And I would say out of everything I watched from Buster Keaton, Sherlock Jr. and One Week, which is a short, those two were my favorites. I would absolutely watch them again and I kind of want to own like a collection of his films somehow because this is something very special. I'm definitely going to be watching more. So I ended up watching quite a few. However, only logged to The General and Sherlock Jr. The General was an 8 out of 10 for me. There was something that didn't quite click there, but it's still brilliant. Sherlock Jr. was a 9 out of 10. Absolutely loved it. It was hilarious and very, very cute, surprisingly. I can just tell you guys in the comments are going to be like, why is she even surprised by this? How did she not know that Buster Keaton's hilarious? Well, I'm sorry. I can't know everything. I didn't go to film school, so that's my excuse. After that, I watched the two Conjuring movies. Now, I don't know if you know this, I'm actually a big fan of the two Conjuring movies, not the entire franchise. I don't like the other movies in the franchise, but Conjuring and The Conjuring 2, I really, really enjoy, and especially the first one, it's one of my favorite horror films. As you can tell, I gave it a 9 out of 10. I gave it a 9 out of 10 the first time I saw it, but I have enjoyed it on every rewatch since then, and it has terrified me on every rewatch since then. I have no idea why I keep watching this movie, because it gives me nightmares. It's so atmospheric, it's spooky, it is a throwback to classic horror, it really feels like a good period piece in a way as well, just the way it creates the world that this is set in. And I also absolutely adore Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga as Ed and Lorraine Warren. I love the two of them on screen. They have such amazing chemistry and they absolutely carry these movies for me. Maybe this is why I don't like the rest of the franchise and I only like the two Conjuring movies. And I'm sure I'm actually going to enjoy the third one. I don't see myself hating it, like even if it's not that great. The two of them are definitely going to make the movie for me. So yeah, I find both of these movies very effective, very disturbing, especially the second one. I am very uncomfortable with possession horror as a concept. It's that loss of control of self that freaks me out and The Conjuring 2 is all about possession. Any movie that has to do with possession is going to make me uncomfortable and James Wan executes both of these movies so, so well. I think he has a very good eye and good sense of what mainstream horror should be like, and I'm kind of disappointed that the new film, The Conjuring 3, is not directed by him. That makes me a little bit concerned, but these two I am a fan of. I wish there were less jump scares in them, especially in the second one, but I, I let it slide. 9 out of 10 for The Conjuring, 8 out of 10 for The Conjuring 2. After that, as you can see, another rewatch. I actually had a decent number of rewatches this month. That doesn't normally happen. I don't rewatch a ton of movies because I'm always worried that I'm missing out on something I haven't seen. But I rewatched A Quiet Place. 
obviously because A Quiet Place 2 was coming out in theaters and I wanted to refresh that movie in my mind. I'm not going to talk about A Quiet Place movies because I have reviews for both of them. I have an old review for A Quiet Place, which I did really enjoy, obviously gave it an 8 out of 10. Back when it came out, I did a review for it. And then I just did a review for A Quiet Place Part 2, which you guys have been skipping. I see you. You should go check out my review. I had a lot to say about that movie, and I thought it was a really good sequel. Also gave it an 8 out of 10. Check out my review. There are no spoilers in it. And last, but certainly not least, I watched a documentary which was some kind of heaven. As you can tell, I needed a break from all the horror I've been watching and I, I don't know if this was the best choice to take a break with because some kind of heaven was some kind of depressing documentary the way I see it. I was definitely bummed out by it and I was not prepared for it mentally. This documentary follows a few people from the Villages, which is a huge retirement community in Florida, and it examines kind of life at retirement and loneliness and love and what you fill your time with and how do you deal with the fact that you are probably going to die very soon. What do you do with your time? What do you turn to as a comfort? Do you find a soulmate? Do you spend your time alone? What is on your mind at that point in your life? It is also quite funny and quite weird. <laughs> this is something that you just need to watch because it's hard to explain what this documentary is outside of its themes. I also have to say I loved the way this was shot. This is shot really well. One of the best looking documentaries I have seen in a while and I am so surprised this was not nominated for the Best Documentary Oscar earlier this year because it is so worthy of a nomination. It was beautifully done. It was strange. It was funny and playful. It was often very depressing and it gave me a lot to think about. I walked away with a lot of mixed feelings when I finished watching it. I just, I had a lot to consider and I wasn't sure how I felt about certain things that it brought up. I'm still not sure and it keeps me thinking, which is great, which is all I want from a film is for it to keep me thinking. I ended up giving this an 8 out of 10. I highly recommend you check this out. It is now on Hulu, so you can easily access it if you have a Hulu subscription or if you don't, you can always do a trial. But that is it for everything I watched in May. This was a pretty unusual month of movies. It's not that I don't watch a lot of horror on a regular basis, but I rarely have an entire month dedicated to almost exclusively one genre, so that was definitely a little bit too much for me. As far as my recommendations go, if we take rewatches out of the conversation because that's not fair, I'm going to rewatch movies that I love. I obviously would say that Oxygen and Some Kind of Heaven are my top recommendations to you. I would love to recommend Time Trap to you guys. I don't know if you are going to love it, but I would love to know what you guys think. If you've seen this movie, please talk to me about it because I, I felt like an insane person for really enjoying this film that nobody ever talks about. And obviously the Buster Keaton silent films, I love them, so I think you should check them out as well, particularly Sherlock Jr. and one week which is not on this list here because it was very short but you can look this up it's on youtube you can find all of them for free on youtube and they definitely deserve to be seen i'm going to be moving on to charlie chaplin next and i've seen quite a few Chaplin films before, but I haven't seen them in a long time, so I'm sure that's going to be a fun journey. But let me know what you have been watching lately. Have you been participating in the whole Halloween thing? If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's just you, we're halfway to Halloween. Were you watching horror movies in May, or am I the only one? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. A special thank you to all of my patrons who are supporting me on Patreon with an extra special thank you to the patrons whose names are on the screen right now. But to every single one of you, thank you for making it to the end of this video if you're still watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos, follow me on social media because notifications fail people all the time. All of the links will be in the info box below and as always, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!